Hey guys, this is Beth with Midland's Vinyl. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make my foamy beach tumbler. Um, this cup is done using the power wash method. Um, I did it and it became really popular in my teaching group. So I figured I would post this on YouTube so everybody could see it. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with a prepped cup. Um, I painted this white first and then I went back over it and added my different colors. Um, I'm not sure, I know this is, Pe this is Lagoon, this is Peacock Blue, and this is Bright Gold, um, all from Rust-Oleum. Um, so I'm going to take this off. This is our Halo. Um, that protects the inside of your cup from getting spray paint on the inside. And we're going to be using the epoxy method. Um, the glitters that I'm using today are Dress Blues from Peachy Olive. I'm going to be using Athena from Peachy Olive. And I'm going to be using a mixture of Weekend at Bernie's and Dress Blues from Peachy Olive that makes this really pretty color that we'll be using in the middle. There's the dark blue. There's our mix. I'm going to be using Gold Member from Peachy Olive on the very bottom. Um, I don't put uh, chunky glitter on my bottom, um, on the bottom of the cup, because to me it's easier to sand if you um, have a fine glitter. And then um, for the chunky part that you see here is going to be Athena from Peachy Olive. Um, so in my cup I have mixed uh, Counterculture's Fast Set, the Ultra Clear Fast Set. This will allow me to get this cup done pretty much in a day. I'm just stirring it. You have a you have a little bit of work time with Facet, but it does start to get warm pretty quick. So um, I'm just going to stir it. It doesn't matter about the bubbles because we're going to be covering it with glitter. I will also have a link to everything that I've used down in the description below. So if you want to make yourself a foamy beach tumbler, you can. I'm just going to stir this up, get it nice and mixed up. Now when doing the epoxy method, all you're really doing is using the glitter, I'm sorry, using the epoxy to um, adhere the glitter, and you just want a very thin coat. You do not want um, the epoxy running because then your glitter is going to shift down. When you're done with this step, you should be able to put this on your drying rack and you shouldn't have to turn it. It, it should be that thin. So I always start in the well right here at the bottom and I just pour a little bit. I'm the queen of overpour, so I would say I mixed 5 mLs total, uh, 2.5 of A and 2.5 of B but you should not need that much. So we're just going to um, cover the cup. I notice in my videos I tend to say um a lot. I'm working on that. You just want a very thin coat. You could also do this with Mod Podge. I just find that using facet on the bottom for the, the this layer, it lets me get these cups done a lot faster. Because in two hours, I can go ahead and apply my first coat of epoxy, which I will also be using facet. I won't be using facet for my last layer. I'll be using um, artist resin from C uh, Counterculture, CCDIY. If you ever hear me refer to CCDIY, that's who it is. It's counterculture. I love their epoxy. And this is the ultra clear facet. So just keep smearing that glit, uh, epoxy down. And then I just take my finger and make sure that I get the very edge of the cup because sometimes we can miss that. You can even hold it up to the light just to make sure that you didn't accidentally miss any spots. And I think we are good. Take my glove off. Okay. 
So I'm going to start at the top. And this is dress blues. You see I made a mess with my Athena. I had a glitter accident. So I'm just going to start at the top. I'm going to hold my cup a little bit at an angle. I'm not going too heavy right at this minute because I want to be able to blend these colors. So I'm just sprinkling very lightly and then I'll go back over and build up my glitter layer. So there's that one. Then we're going to move in to the second color. I like to spray paint the cup about the same color of the glitter if I can, especially when I'm ombre and I feel like it just helps me out a little bit. And again, you can see I'm not going heavy handed at all. Just kind of laying it all out there. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom. And it's okay if some of the glitter gets along the edges, that's fine. Um, I actually prefer the fine glitter around the edges, again, just because that means less sanding. I'm going to go ahead and hit it with my Athena. I'm going to hold the cup at an angle. This allows the glitter to kind of cascade down. And then when I go to do um, more coverage on this end, I'll tilt it this way. So all of the colors kind of blend together. So I'm just going to tilt the cup and turn. I'm, I'm pretty far away from the cup. I'm not like right on top of it. That just allows the glitter to fall more sparsely down at the bottom. And then you can always go back in with your fine and fill in any spots or any gaps that maybe the chunky didn't cover. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dress blues and I'm gonna just start to go really heavy handed with it. Paying really close attention to that top edge. And then as I glitter, I'm gonna tilt my cup so that the blue falls down into the teal. So like that. Look at all that. Like this. Everybody always compliments how neat I work. They don't see a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. I'm really a messy crafter. If you could see my floor, you would know exactly what I meant. So to blend these two colors at the top, I'm gonna tilt my cup this way. I'm just gonna sprinkle as I turn. and it gives it a really good blend. Then I'm gonna tilt it this way and I'm gonna let the teal fall down into the gold like that. I wanna bring my blue down a little bit and because the epoxy so soaks up some of the glitter, can do that. So I'm going to take my dress blues and I'm going to go down in the teal just a little bit more. Now I have a good bit of Athena on the bottom, but I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more and when you're working with chunky glitter, um, I advise that once you get what you want on the cup, 
that you take your finger or a piece of wax paper and you push the chunky pieces down, you will be glad that you did when you go to the sanding step. So I'm just going to tap, get it all laid down. Then I'm going to take my gold member and I'm going to go over Athena and I'm going to fill in those gaps. And when I go to put my next coat of epoxy on here, I do not seal this cup. A lot of people seal if there's three layers or two layers. For this cup, I don't seal because I'll start, when I start epoxying, I'll start from the bottom and come up. Um, I just feel like with these colors and the actual theme of the cup, sealing is not necessary. So this is your first step. As you can see, the ombre is beautiful. It looks beachy. We've got a good mixture of fine and chunky and then our fine on the bottom. And so I'm gonna let this dry off camera, of course, because I know you guys don't wanna sit there two hours. Um, and then I'll be back for the next step will be um, the power wash method. So when this dries, I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of facet on here. Um, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, you know how to epoxy a cup. Um, you're just gonna mix equal parts A and B, and you're gonna coat the whole cup and let it spin. Depending on what kind of epoxy you're using, um, I'll be using facet, so two hours. And then if you're using regular, regular epoxy, it's anywhere from four to five hours. So off camera, I will epoxy this. When we come back, we're gonna go straight to the power wash method and then we'll finish it off with our decal. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, so we're back and it's time to sand our beach tumbler. I'm gonna use a 60 grit sanding block, a spray bottle with some soapy water and a coffee filter. The reason why wet sand is because it keeps the epoxy dust from kicking back up in your face Plus, it also creates a smoother finish. When I'm sanding the rim of the cup, I'm gonna leave a tiny strip of stainless steel. Uh, I think it creates a, a really beautiful finish. A lot of people are concerned that when you do that, that you will cause the steel to be broken. Um, that is not the case because once we place our decal, we're gonna put another coat of epoxy on, and what we'll do is we'll bring it all the way up to cover that stainless steel. So you don't have to worry about your seal being broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the cup with the soapy water and then I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm just going to sand. You can get these sanding blocks on Amazon. Um, I'll be sure to add these into the description below so you can grab you some. And then you're gonna make sure you get the bottom really, really good. And I just like to take my finger and just kind of rub around and make sure that it's smooth. If I feel any spots, I keep sanding. You want the cup as smooth as possible. Now, if you feel that after you've sanded, that this is still just not quite smooth enough, you can go ahead and do another coat of facet if you want, and then re-sand. I always epoxy until I get a smooth finish because you don't want your decal to show any kind of bumps or lumps underneath the epoxy. So we're just gonna sand the top. And once you have it all sanded and smooth, then you can move on to your next step, which is the power wash. Um, after you're done sanding, take your spray bottle, spray the cup again. 
I use coffee filters because they don't leave any kind of lint behind, any kind of dust particles or anything like that. You can get them really cheap off of Amazon. Um, I love to get everything off of Amazon. And now we're ready for power wash. So I'm going to get you guys set up outside and then I'll show you how I do the power wash foam. All right guys, so we're outside and we're about to do the power wash. You want to grab you some Dawn Power Wash. It doesn't matter the scent. This is the first one I picked up. And then you want to grab you some flat or matte white spray paint. This is actually a primer. This is what I use when I prep my cups. Um, I found that matte or flat works the best. You want a water hose or a bucket full of water. It doesn't matter which, which one you use. So what you want to do is you want to come kind of far away. You don't want to be up close on the cup and you just want to spray the bottom area. So I'm going to back off pretty good and I'm just going to sporadically spray. I don't want big globs. I just want to create the, the cell effect. So then you're going to take your spray paint, give it a test spray, and you're just going to spray the bottom. And I don't do like full coverage. Then you're going to dip it in your bucket. And there you go. Because this cup has epoxy on it, if you don't like the way this looks, you can go in and you can rub it all off with acetone and start over. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Um, so the next step is we'll let this dry and then we'll be ready for decal. Hey guys, so we are back and we are ready to place our decal. Our cup is dry. So I did not put another coat of epoxy on before I went into the decal. So this is gonna be a um, layered decal and I'm gonna put gold on the bottom and beige on the top. So some people layer their vinyl before they put it on the cup. I have to do mine on the cup. I know I'm weird, but um, I have to do mine on the cup. So, going to peel this off. Sometimes the chrome vinyl doesn't want to come off that well. Sometimes if you pull the actual backing instead of trying to pull the front, the vinyl comes off a little bit easier. the tedious part and I squeegeed this thing let me do it again just to go over it one more time Let's see if that'll help any Just gonna pull really slow because there's a couple of dots and dashes in here and I just want to make sure that I don't lose those like that dash right there doesn't want to stay there we go I really feel like this is what makes decal day so dreadful an L. And voila. So, I know this is probably upside down, but I pick a spot in the middle and I want to lay the gold down first. Before I smush it, I'm going to make sure that it's centered on the cup. And I'm just going to press it down. Really, really good. And I think this is a 
um, 15 offset um, against the chrome and the beige vinyl. Um, I use Expressions Vinyl Opaque. Um, I'll make sure to put that in the description below. It's the transfer tape I've used since I became a tumbler maker and I won't use any other kind. I absolutely love it. So you can do this one or two ways. If you have OCD, so as you can see, here's the gold. Really, really pretty. You can do this one or two ways because if you're OCD like me, you want to make sure everything lines up. Now you could do this in one full swoop, but again, because I'm OCD, I want to make sure that everything lines up. This is a, uh, an example of working harder, not smarter. So I just cut my decal into strips and I work with each one separately. So I'm going to put psalms, I'm going to put the psalm down first. And I find something that's got a, a pretty good shape to it so I can follow it. So I'm going to use this three as my guideline because it's kind of pointy. And then I just rub my finger across the top and peel it off. And that's what it looks like right there. So the next one I'm going to do is my sole. I'm going to let the S be my guide because of the curvature. And I decided to do it this way because when I was weeding the gold, I had a couple of letters that wanted to, to slip on me. And instead of recutting the whole decal, I'm just gonna piece it together. Again, do this however you, you probably do it better than me anyway. So next is gonna be, he restores. And I'm going to use the R because it has a little boot at the bottom and I can follow it. And then I'm going to do still waters. And I'm going to use the W as my guide. And you see I'm only laying one half of the decal down first. And then I'll come to this side just to make sure that it all still lines up perfectly. Oh, I lost my S. then he leads me beside. And on this one, I'm going to use the E. Now this is where I lost some of my letters weeding the chrome. So I just want to kind of start with one word at a time and make sure that everything still lines up. Like beside is off because I lost a couple of letters. So what I'll do is I'll just take my scissors and I'll cut the side off. And then I can lay this one down because my B was a little off and it still is for the rest of the words against the rest. So I'll put the B down first and I'll pull it up and then I'll do the rest because the rest line up perfectly. Just improvise. That's what I was doing, improvising. And there you have it. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. So now that we have this, I don't wait. I go straight into epoxy. So I'll get you set up over the at the Turner station and we will put our coat of epoxy on. All right guys, so we're at the final step, applying our epoxy. I am using Artist Resin from Counterculture. You're gonna mix equal parts A and B. For this cup, because I have double vinyl, 
I'm going to go ahead and mix 20 parts of A, 20 mLs of A, and 20 mLs of B. If I have any left over, I can throw it in a mold. Um, that way you don't waste it. So I'm going to pour um, A in first. I mix by hand, but we offer epoxy mixers um, that you can use. So if you want to work on cups, you know, while your epoxy is mixing for you, um, a lot of people love them. Um, quite a few people in our teaching group have them. If you're not in our teaching group, it's Tumblr Mayhem and more. Um, we do lives, we do giveaways. Um, it's just a great, great community to be a part of. So here's my 20 of B. And you want to mix this really well. So by hand, it, it does take a little time, but um, I don't focus too much on the bubbles because I'm going to use my torch. Um, I don't use the big, big torch because as soon as it starts hissing, I freak out. So I just use this from Lowe's um, and it does the job just fine. So I'm just going to stir up my epoxy, make sure that it's all combined together. I'm going to cut my turner on. So it's going in the right direction. I'm one of those that my turner has to be going in a certain direction. Weirdo, I know. So I'm just going to keep mixing. The epoxy mixer that we offer, it spins your epoxy for 10 minutes. When it is done mixing, it is literally like glass. There is no bubbles. Um, you just take it out of the cup and you pour it straight on to your tumbler. Um, but for the sake of this video, I am hand mixing. So, and you can find our epoxy mixers, our cup turners, all of the goodies that we sell, the halos that keep you from getting spray paint in your cup. All that can be found on our website, which is midlandsvinyl.com. So I'm just going to mix, keep mixing, 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 mixing. And then I'm going to put it on the cup. So I just start to pour. I know my hand is in the way, but I'm going to move it. And that little thin line that we created at the top, I'm slowly running my finger over the top of that so I can create that seal. And that's how you know that the seal will not be broke because you are going back over it with a coat of epoxy. And I didn't take any of the paint off of this one. I love the way that um, the foam looks. And again, you can use Armor Art, you can use um, epoxy dye, you can use whatever you want to create this effect. I just feel like the power wash method gives it more of a, a natural look, like an authentic beach foam. Um, and I can never create sails with armor art. I don't know why, but there's a lot of people can, like Misty Leonard, she can, she's really good at creating sails. Love me some Misty. So this is my cheat way. And then I'm going to make sure that I get the bottom. And to ensure that you don't have a wobbly bottom, what I like to do is I like to just go straight down to make sure that the epoxy isn't pulling on, you know, one side. If for whatever reason your cup turner's unlevel or your table's unlevel, um, that will help to keep you from getting a wobbly bottom. This is one of my favorite cups. It really speaks to you. It's a great reminder too. 
And this, um, I have three orders for these. It's going to a very special person in my life. So, Miss Glenda, if you're watching this, I love you to pieces. Now, because I'm using Artist Resin and not Facet, I'm going to let this spin. I'll put it on my timer um, and let this spin for about four hours. And that'll be it. Once it's done, I'll look and see if any spots need to be sanded. If they do, then I'll do another final coat. Not a big deal. And that is it. I'm going to let that spin for a second. And then I'll hit it with a torch. Paying really close attention to the vinyl because you don't want any bubbles. Like with this cup, this has um, a holographic vinyl. And you will see every tiny little bubble and even on the little black watermelon seeds. So I let it spin for a few minutes and then I'm going to do a couple of quick passes with my torch. Look at that shine. That's why I love counterculture. They're, they're ultra clear facet, they're artist resin. It looks like glass. It doesn't matter what application you use on the cup. When you throw that epoxy on there, it looks like glass. So that's it. I'll walk away. Check your cup in 10 minutes because sometimes bubbles will come up um, that you didn't see. They'll rise to the surface. You can hit it with the torch again. Um, like I said, pay special attention to your vinyl. Look at it really good in the light. Make sure you don't have any bubbles or anything like that. And then you are done. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. I know that when I did the foamy beach. I fell in love with it um, using the power wash method. It is super easy. You can use the power wash method for a lot of things. Um, I've done tie-dye cups. I've done swirls. It just adds that different flair to it. Um, if you like this video and you found it was helpful, if you will give us a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, if you have not subscribed, please do so so you don't miss beautiful creations like this. And as usual, I'll have everything listed in the description below that I have used, from the colors to the epoxy to the transfer tape. Everything will be down in the bottom. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you later.